Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to provide a demonstration on how to use Selenium IDE. The intended audience of this video are those who are new to or unfamiliar with Selenium IDE and wish to learn how to use it. In my previous video, I demonstrated how to install Selenium IDE in Firefox. To run Selenium IDE, we simply go to our Firefox browser and in the menu bar, we should see our Selenium IDE icon. As indicated here, the tooltip should appear. Great, I'm going to select that and up comes an, another window and I'm going to move it here. That informs us, welcome to Selenium IDE. What would you like to do? Restore, or should I say, record a new test in a new project or open an existing project or close Selenium IDE? Well, I'm going to choose record a new test in a new project. So I'm selecting that. We're then prompted to name our new project. Please provide a name for your new project. Okay, I'm going to call it my first test project. Why not? We can change the name of this project at any time later by clicking it and entering a new name. Okay, that's great. I'm now going to select okay. We're now asked to set the project's base URL. This is the base URL from which we will be recording our Selenium IDE scripts. So I'm going to type um, the URL of the website from the Institute of Technology, Tala in Dublin, Ireland. So www.it-tala.ie. Great. And I'm going to select Start Recording. And it opens up a new browser window. So I'm going to move it over here. Um, you can see that it has Selenium ID is recording. So it's currently recording by default, which is normal and expected. Great. Be aware, once again, that when we run Selenium ID for the first time, it is automatically recording as indicated by this button here. This button is effectively a toggle. So to stop recording, you simply select it. I'm going to do that now. And when we stop recording, we're automatically prompted to name our new tests. Please provide a name for your new tests. Okay, I'm just going to call it test one for simplicity. Not an ideal name, but it's fine for the purposes of demonstration. Again, we can change it at any time by clicking the, the, the relevant icon uh, beside the name of the test in the test panel later. Great. So I'm going to select OK. And there is test one. And of course, there are no actions re um, recorded because we didn't do anything. I now wish to demonstrate the typical workflow that you would follow when using Selenium IDE. So the first thing is you would typically add a new test by selecting the plus symbol as indicated here. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to choose the name test2 just for demonstration purposes and select add. The next thing you would do is you would type in your base URL. So once again, I'm going to choose the same base URL that I entered already, but just to show you the typical workflow. Very good. Next, you then would typically select record, start recording. So the control tip is control U there. Fine. So I'm going to select recording and it opens up a new window each time. So I'm just going to leave that there. Why not? And I'm going to extend it so it's pretty clear. So you see the workflow. This is what typically happens. And then you simply interact with the website. So for example, I'm going to select the search icon here and or prompted to enter in a search term. I'm going to search for the term computing and then hit enter. And as you notice, as I'm uh, interacting with the website, the entries of my interaction are entered here. Great. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select Department of Computing, for example. Then it presents me with the relevant page. I can scroll down and I'm going to select one of the streams that are presented in IT Telecomputing with IT Management. Okay, select that. Again, it's recording the details here. Um, it loads the page. Excellent. And the course content, the various different modules. Um, I'm going to select the module Software Quality Assurance and Testing. And it opens up a new window. Now be aware, your browser may be set to block pop-ups. So that could have presented us with an error had pop-ups been disabled. Okay, so you see what's happening. For each interaction, there's recorded an activity in the um, Selenium IDE. I now wish to unpack and explain what these columns actually refer to. So the first column is the command. This refers to the actual command to be executed on the web page. 
So we opened up the home page here. Then if you notice, I set the window size, I resized it. Then I clicked on the search icon. Um, I clicked in the box and then I entered in, the command here is type, I entered in computing and then I hit enter and it searched for it and so on. So command refers to the actual command to be executed on the page. Target refers to the element that we actually interacted with on the page. Or when it refers to the open command, which web page we're going to open, the, the forward slash refers to the base URL um, and so on. Okay, and um, if we click on an element, it refers to what we clicked on and so on. The value column refers to the value to be used in the case of certain commands, for example, like type text, as we can see here. I typed in um, onto the target name, the value computing and so on. Okay, and lastly, there's an optional um, field, which is description. And typically this is where you might put in a comment or some extra information information describing the particular command to be executed. A useful feature of Selenium IDE is that while you're recording, you can actually right click over the web page. For example, I'm going to right click over the text software quality assurance and testing. And you'll see there's an option at the end, Selenium IDE. And then I can select these various options here. So I can select verify text and it's added the command at the end, verify text. So it's very useful for testing your application to verify that an ex some text, an expected text is actually where it's supposed to be. Very, very nice feature. When you finish recording the steps that you wish to record or the interactions you wish to record in the browser, you simply select the toggle here, um, stop recording. Great, and as you can see, the message is no longer displayed at its recording, which is expected. And then you might have noticed that this icon flashed, which, which is very good. It suggests that we should immediately save our project, which is a very wise thing to do. So I'm going to select Save. I'm going to navigate to my temp folder and I'm going to choose the default, my first test project, that side. So the default extension is SIDE for Selenium IDE. Very good. And it's saved. Great. When you finish recording your test script, you can then play it back to check if it properly repeats your test sequence. So the first thing I would suggest you do is select the test execution speed. At the by default, it's set to maximum, which is really fast. My advice is to set that a little bit slower. I'm going to put it just above halfway. Great. And then to, to play back, my advice would also be to scroll up and select the first command. So you'll see it in blue as shown there. And then finally, you select Run Current Test, which is this icon here. So I'm going to run that now. And as you can see, preparing to run tests. Then it goes to the home page. The box appears here. It's now typing. I'm not doing any of this. It then goes to the web page. Very good. It says Firefox prevented this site from opening a pop-up window. I'm glad you saw that. So. It's normally going to give maybe anything from 10 seconds to 30 seconds before it'll report an error. So I'm going to let this run in real time unless it takes too long. I can always edit from the video, but it's currently at step eight and I expect this to go red any moment because it will be unable to open the window due to the default settings of pop-ups being blocked. So that's something I'm gonna to have to change. And there you can see it, excellent. The select window wins there the error and as you can see, our log file at the bottom under log records all of the operations and it tells us each of the steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, green, okay. Fine, until we come here, it says set window on SIR1. It tried to select a second window, which failed to open and it tells us failed and timeout and test two ended one error. Excellent. So to prevent this error from reoccurring, I'm going to select the options here in my browser, click options allow pop-ups for www.it-tala-ie.ie and great. So it now opens the window, but of course the test has failed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close that tab and indeed close this tab. So that's, I've, I've only a blank tab open. I'm now going to go back up and select the top again. And once more, I'm going to select run test. Now all going well, it'll run this time without error. So once again, I'm not clicking on anything. The, Selenium is running it. So it's on step six, seven, as you can see here. 
It's not, and brilliant, it's opened up the tab successfully this time and it's jumping to the correct component and then it's opened it up. And then it finally opened up the last page and let me scroll down. Test two completed successfully. Fantastic. Please be aware that sometimes the Selenium IDE plugin is a little temperamental. Sometimes the log won't display. So you may find you have an error or a failure and you might like to know more detail of what is causing that error. So the best thing to do in that case is to save the project. Um, we've already saved it, but let me do it here. Save. Do you wish to replace it? Yes. Then navigate to your folder and then right click and select edit with notepad plus plus. This is not ideal, but at least is an option. So as you can see your data, your tests are saved as a JSON file and you can scroll down and for each particular um, action, you can see exactly how Selenium IDE navigates and selects that. The various CSS, the various expat expressions and so on. It's really, really nice. So this gives you complete and detailed information. So this is often very useful for debugging why a particular script won't work. Okay. Let me close this there now. I now wish to explain the other buttons available in the Selenium IDE plugin. So I've already shown you the option to run the current test, but to the left of that is an icon that allows you to run all of your tests. So you could have a whole suite of tests here and by selecting this option, it would run them all starting from top to bottom. Likewise, you can actually select any particular command within any given test and then select the step over current command. And this effectively allows you to execute one command at a time, effectively step through your test, which is really nice. You can also disable breakpoints. Um, you can also pause in exceptions, which is really nice. Again, I've shown you how to save the project. You can open up a project here, create a new project. And of course, you can rename your existing project by clicking here. Great. Well, that concludes my Selenium IDE demonstration. Um, the next step I would recommend for you to learn more is to go to the following URL, um, which I'm highlighting here. And there's a very nice tutorial um, that explains and introduces um, in a little bit more detail how to proceed. So it explains the various components. It, the crux of Selenium is that it's an element locator and Selenium supports the following locators. And then it walks through and provides a um, nice demonstration of various commands in action. So how to open, how to click or click add, um, how to send keys with an example, how to highlight with an example, how to store values or echo values and so on, how to perform uh, verifies and assertions of text and titles, very good. How to verify elements are present, excellent. Um, how to pause, how to choose OK on the next confirmation, um, to select a value from a drop-down menu, very good. Um, how to add a selection, to remove a selection, to assert an alert, um, very good, and so on. You can look at those yourself. And crucially, they provide a full example with the full script that's downloadable. So I highly recommend that you work through this example or read this uh, web page and then work through this example yourself. Okay, thank you. For completeness, I should demonstrate how to close the Selenium IDE. Well, make sure you've saved your project and then simply, and I've already saved it, so I'm not going to do that again, and simply select X up here and that's it. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.